This is a follow-up tutorial to one I did yesterday about building a multiplayer game in five minutes. Uh, someone in the comments asked about how to synchronize the animation of a character across the network. So you might recall in yesterday's tutorial we were able to sync the position and uh, the location in the world of the player but we didn't actually look at syncing anything past that, so that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm quickly going to create um, a scene. Instead of creating using a plane, I'll actually use uh, the standard assets prototyping um, items. So there's actually in this set, there's a uh, 64 by 64 floor prefab somewhere in here this one there, drag that into the scene uh, and I'll also drag in the uh, character so this time we'll drag in the third person character so where is that, so we go into prefabs this guy here drag him in, so when I press, press play you've got this character that you can move around and it walks. So I'm going to import, like I did yesterday, um, ML API, which is the networking library. Except this time I'm just importing the installer. So once that's imported, you go to the window menu, check ML API. Uh, I'm going to fetch all to make sure that's installed. I believe it's installed, but just to double check. So with this character selected, I'll go to add component. Uh, ML API doesn't seem to be in the window, so I'll just hit install here. I think that's a bug with the ML API installer that it said that the latest version was installed when it wasn't. So I wait for that to finish and now I should be able to add ML API a networked object and an ML API network transform. Uh, now I'm also going to install the project cloner so I'll just unzip that and drag it to my desktop and then once I've done that, I'll drag it into the assets directory of the project. And that will, after a couple of seconds, create a tools menu with which I can clone the project. Give that a few seconds. Uh, I'm going to open this clone project. change this to a wide view because I find that's best to put them side by side with and I'll go in and I will open after I save this scene save go over to this project go to scenes sample scene and we have the same character here Double check him here. Now that in, is interesting. He's no longer moving in the world once I've added those transforms in. So if I get rid of that and hit play again, he does move in the world. Right, network transform. doesn't move in the world. Let's see what's happening here. So before I get too caught up in that, I'm going to drag my character from the scene into my assets folder, create an original prefab. I'm going to delete the character from the scene. I'm going to create a new empty object, call it network. Uh, to that I'm going to add 
an ML API networking manager. I'll select the unit transport. I'll create a slot under network prefabs, tick default player prefab, and I will drag this character in there. Now just to double check that this works, I'll hit play. I'll hit start host. Right, so it does work when you're actually running on the network. It just doesn't seem to work if you're trying to run it locally without multiplayer. Right, so that's there. Now, can we go over to this world here? And I want to save this scene over here. So let's stop play and save this. Now, once I've saved that, when I return here, it says, do you want to reload this scene? So that we have the exact same scene. And if I hit network here, then hit play, I can click on start host over here. This character runs around. If I'm here and I hit play, and I hit start client, I click on here, we have a character here. Now, you can see that while the movement is being synced from one to the other, the animation seems to be playing on both in the left-hand window and that's not what we want so let's click on this window and see what the difference is here the animation so the animation appears to play on whatever window you are controlling so we need to add in a script similar to the one I did yesterday which disables these um, uh, disables the character controller uh, parts. So if we look, look at this character, so let's open up the prototype of this character. We can see that it has on it a third person user control. Uh, we probably want to disable that. And we, I think, I think that's what we want initially. So let's try that. I'm going to find that script I used yesterday. So I'll go to desktop. I'll go over to, actually it's under Dropbox. It's under Unity Project actually. Um, where was it? That one there. Unity Project, Assets. And the script was shoot set that onto the desktop. I'm going to drag that in. I'm going to rename that. I'm just going to call it, um, I'll just call it player. I'll drag that into the project. Now when I open it up, I, I have to rename the script to match what its file name is. So I'll rename this to player. And I want to say, if it's not the local player, then we need to disable, the part we need to disable is the third person user control. So I want to say um, third, and actually I want to import the third person. And I want to in the third person user control. I want to disable that. Now, I've only got one camera in the scene, so I don't need to destroy any game object that has a camera on it. Now, for now, I won't bother with this update function. I'll just comment that out. And I'm going to attach this script to the player by dragging it down to here. So now when I hit play over here, I return back to the scene and I click on network and choose start host. This character runs around. Over here, I should be able to hit play and click on start client. Right, so we've made it so the animation only appears in one window. In other words, when I'm moving this one on the right, 
it moves in both, but it only animates in one. Whereas before we had it animating in both. So now we're up to the part to answer this question of how do I sync this animation? So ML API also comes with um, a component that lets you, apart from network transform and network object, there's also ML API networked animator. And then you can, you can see on this character, it's got an animator here. I can drag that down into uh, that slot. And the things I want to send across the network are those. So if I now, I think that should be it. So if I now run this scene and I click on the network and choose start host. Yep, this character still works. Let's go to this one and we'll hit play. I'll just double check that this character has that component. Yes, it does and everything's ticked. Click on network, hit play. Click on start client. And you can see that the animation is now synced over the network. So both character, or the character, the one character, you can see it both move and animate in both. And likewise, if I click on this one, it also moves and animates. So that's just a brief introduction to how to sync up animation using ML API. So just to run through it again, uh, when you're creating a character that you want to sync across the network, uh, the scripts that you need to add to it are the ML API network transform that will sync across the position and rotation and scale of the character, the transform across the network. Uh, the networked object um, that identifies the entity or the game object that you've ad added this to on the network as being something that's used by the network, uh, basically gives it a network ID. And to sync the animation, you add the ML API networked animator and you drag in um, the animator component. Now that might also be in a sub object. You can also drag it from a sub object. If you were to open up, say, the prefab and that animator happened to be on a child, you could then grab that child and drag that over. You could lock this and drag that over. Um, and then you tick these boxes to say, well, these are the variables on the animator that I want to sync. So in other words, in this case, you probably want to sync all of them because we do want to know whether or not it's running forward, whether it's turning, whether it's crouching on the ground, jumping, etc. Um, so that's how you add animation and keep it synced across the network using ML API. Uh, hopefully this has been insightful for you. If you have any questions, please leave a comment, um, hit like and subscribe. And if you've got any ideas for further tutorials or any other questions that I could perhaps make a tutorial out of, feel free to answer in the comments. Thanks very much.